الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على الشيخ المرسلين وأتي الله أتي رسول الله يا أمر منكم I'm going to always for myself that when, when they talk on a subject it requires a contemplation for a long time. It's not something that comes and goes when they are talking from the holy hadith of Sayyidina Muhammad I think it was hadith from Qudsi where Allah describing there's a big conveyance that the servant who completed his obligations Allah is concerned only with Sayyidina Muhammad This path of ours its first gate is that to be nothing. If I'm nothing then I'm not looking for everything about me, I'm not reading Qur'an about me, I'm not thinking about everything about me and me with Allah I'm nothing. All Allah has to do with me, I'm nothing. That's a gate for marifa and in that marifa they walk through as if they're nothing because you said at the gate you're nothing. Then Allah describes a holy hadith in which he's talking about the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad He wants Prophet tell your people, they'll understand one day, especially your companions understand right away but they'll understand the generations come later that I am the eyes in which you see, I am the hearing in which you hear, I am the breath in which you breathe. Well, as Allah described Surat Al-Najam he doesn't speak but that it's wahi, uhi al-Qur'an means everything is coming out is Holy Qur'an from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and he doesn't speak except that it's revelation. Even the saliva of Prophet is from Divinely Presence and Allah is describing him, his hearing. Not on this earth of a, a dot and an epsilon in the middle of nowhere. You look on the internet and you see zoom out, look to the Milky Way, the earth is forget it you can't find it. Imagine the inhabitants on the earth, Allah Almighty God you think He gave the earth to Prophet That's like giving nothing. I can see, you have eyes, I can, I can see it's nothing. And Allah just said, no, this, this entire universe, everything created, sakhal lakum ma fi samawati wa ma fi wa jamiyan. I have given you whatever is in the heavens, whatever is on the earth and anything in between in case they come to argue with you later on. That Allah didn't include the souls. No, no, Jamie and everything, everything in creation, Allah said, just said, give to you. Then the hadith comes because it's like a tasbih, you have to put the beads together. Allah doesn't put it on your plate for you, He puts it all in little beads so that you attend with the shaykhs and they'll, they'll sew your beads together and give you a tasbih of your life. So that you have a marifa and an understanding. When Allah described that, I have given everything to you, then Allah come back and begin to describe that I am His hearing. He hears with Allah's power. When Allah gave Ahmad He gave the hamd, the praise of all praisings of all these universes, Allah bestowed Alif. Is I saw that this is my support. You are now of a category of alif. Is that Allah, where Allah's reality is hidden, and Allah convey the izza to the hamd and make it to be Ahmad. Then begin to describe that your praise is the power for this entire universe and I am the alif in your heart. I'm the power and the qudra within your heart 
Then the hadith, holy hadith comes, it describes, I am his hearing Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I am his seeing Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I am the breath in which he breathes, the tongue in which he speaks, the hand means the power of Allah's power or in the hands of the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad his qadam and his movement in malakut, they're only interested in the world of light. Their tafsir is not interested in this world of mulk, it means nothing. Well, what do you want to know about the mulk, where the pizza shop is, where the coffee store is? You're not going to find anything of any value here. They're going to teach you from the world of light. So Allah now is describing this world of light that this soul of Sayyidina Muhammad hears with Allah's hearing, sees with Allah's seeing, speaks with Allah's speaking, breathes with Allah's breathing. Means a nafas a rahmah, rahmah wa ma arsalnaka rahmatan lil alameen. Its nafas is also from Sayyidina Muhammad means he's the power that powering everything. And Allah is on his heart. Allah is the center of power of that reality that can never be seen. So then what Allah described? That his power never sleep and slumber overtakes him. When you're talking about an authority of light then Allah don't think through the body. This light that covering entire universes, it doesn't sleep. The power of the soul, Nurul Anwar was Sirat al Asrar. The secret of that light, it never sleeps, it never slumbers, and is ever vigilant over everything. This light is vigilant over everything. We'll see it just in the understanding of knowledges without going into Ayatul Qur'an because then they get confused. Where Allah gave us then this understanding in the world is Wi-Fi. So as soon as I hold up a phone, this concept of an energy, a source of power that's powering this device. And now they're becoming with actual power to charge it without a wire because that's very low and archaic understanding. They'll power this without a wire. They'll give information to it without a wire, it's Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi for us is to understand that Allah said, why is this so difficult for you to understand that in the center of all of this creation there's something called Muhammadun Rasulullah and he's emitting a Wi-Fi signal for the entire of creation. And that reality is high and it's Qayyum. This Qudra and power that coming out is a soul, we're not talking about a body. We're talking about a, a light like a star that even we can't imagine what type of light that is. And every photon of that light like a Wi-Fi, it's coming to you, right? It's hitting you and powering you. If that Wi-Fi and the signal of that drops from you, you cease to exist. And that's why Allah described that fiqum, His signal is entirely around you and in you. Everything about that light is powering you. Look to one person and see that four trillion cells within your body, every cell has a signal coming, every cell is like a mobile phone. Every cell in the body needs to know what are its coordinates. There is nothing random in Allah's creation, every cell needs to turn, are we turning right, are we turning left, are we alive or are we dying? Are we healthy or are we sick? Is what? And Surat Al Qadr? Tanazul Malaikati wa Ruh bi idni Rabbihim wa kulinam. Kulinam, every single order is coming as a signal. 
with the permission of their Lord in reference to Prophet And Prophet gets permission from Allah because it's Atiullah, Atiya Rasul and Ulul Amri Minkum. So it means this Wi-Fi signal is coming out, powering everything. Every cell in the body needs to know its coordinates. Every cell in the body needs to know if it's alive, it's a dead, it's sick or it's healthy. Every organ in the body has to know is it beating or it's not going to beat. At every moment it gets its coordinates. Every ant, every sustenance, every flower, nothing just like if you cut the signal now, if you don't charge it, it's dead. Doesn't matter how fancy the box is. And if it doesn't get a signal, there's no video, there's no internet, there's no phone call, it's nothing. Same with the flower. The flower is, is in need of that signal. When the signal comes, the flower is growing, the flower is blossoming. Means everything in this creation requires that signal. That signal, it's high. It's life. Allah is not within the ocean of Hay. Allah said, I created Hay your might to test you. I'm not in your understanding of living. When Allah loves His servant, He wants to bring them towards His marifah, realities, not of Himself. I want to bring you towards what I love, I love Muhammadun Rasulullah I want to show you what gifts I've given to that reality and that soul. So that signal is broadcasting out, sending throughout your entire being, throughout the entire universes. And what Allah describes that no one encompasses anything from that knowledge unless it has permission of Prophet What's Ayat al Kareem that says? Ilmi ilahi bima shah. Not the knowledge of books. Well, oh no, this Prophet only knows this book and that book. No, no. Allah is just saying, this knowledge of everything in this universe is known by no one. This is what we call above binary code is machine language. Baina Ahad wa Ahmad, there is no intercession, there is nothing that is created to understand those coordinates. And that's why Allah inspired us to make computers. Do you understand computer language? You can go up to letters and numbers but binary code nobody can talk or type in binary code, one and zero, on and off. This on and off is the reality of Ahad and maybe Ahmad. The reality of Allah on and the signal continuously coming to Prophet reality. As a result of receiving those signals that is the knowledge of the entire created universe. This knowledge is above the level of Sayyidina Jibra'il. This level of Sayyidina Jibra'il or these tafsirs and talks at that level. Above this level is in the depth of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad which is receiving the binary code from Allah of one and zeros. Means the information that coming that Allah says, no one has access to this information. So it's not the knowledge of these, these had the dunya and the earth knowledge, it's the knowledge that everything that being sustained, every planet in the farthest galaxy, in the farthest universes, all of those uloom and knowledges that come from Allah into the soul of Prophet and dispersed with what? Mala'ika wa ruh is sending out the signal and illuminating and nourishing and keeping everything alive the way Allah wanted to be alive. That is from the haqqaiqs of Sayyidina Muhammad This is what is nourishing us. When they don't understand the importance of Mawlid and Nabi it's not something small. It's the step in which to move towards that reality that only Allah wants us to come to understand this, this way of reality is something mind-boggling, heart-boggling that what Allah has bestowed upon that reality. And how that reality is emanating lights and powers and qudra, all of those realities. 
That's what we're trying to reach towards that understanding, dressed by that understanding. Then Allah describing that is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad representing Allah's hearing, seeing, speaking, what other faculty is left? Allah saying, basically, um, my power is completely powering the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad and then what Prophet Ya Rabbi nobody can praise you like you can praise yourself. Means I cannot reach a level in which to thank you or power myself for the power you've given to me. That's why when we make a durud al-sharif, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad means it's Allah's making zikr of Himself. You're not even involved in this durud al-sharif. Allah is the making the zikr of Himself, praising Himself, thanking Himself for this reality. The hadith is this description of Prophet Now Prophet is with this power of hearing, seeing, speaking, touching, moving, inherits that to awliya. To their darajar Prophet begin to dress them as they're approaching the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Prophet begin to teach that I'm going to be your hearing. Because you love me and I love you, you entered into my heart, I'm going to dress you with what Allah has dressed me, you're going to have from my hearing. Because you never go above Prophet it's ihtiram and adab, stand behind your shaykh, never walk in front of your shaykh. Don't think yourself to be in front of him, walk behind him. What do you think then about Prophet Could you dare to walk and keep your back to Prophet No. So how you can even talk in that sense? So everything's always behind. That Allah gives everything to Prophet and we come to the door. That's why these salawats and these knots are powerful. Only through this praising you can reach that door. You can pray all you want in your masjid and you never will achieve even a drop of that reality because the salah doesn't open that. Your zakat doesn't open that. Your hajj definitely doesn't open that. What opens that is Salli Ala Sayyidina Muhammad is when you get to the associations that are praising and loving and loving and loving, as soon as they enter into the door of Sayyidina Muhammad He's dressing them, blessing them, his, his what we just described, this power. Can you imagine the hearing of Prophet is now from the whole universe, we can report this, we can do this for like 10 years, I don't think we get the depth of what's really coming, is that this energy now begins to like a microwave hit you at a strength that you can't imagine. It's a power for the entire universe. As soon as you praise one time upon Sayyidina Muhammad he asks just one time from his nation, he wants to give the greatest gift to his nation. Praise me one time, you don't know what Allah dressed me with. Because then Allah will send my nazar to be upon you, send my soul to be upon you. What does that mean? He said, my nazar will be on you. If my nazar is on you, these eyes that power the entire created universe will be powering your entire reality. That's why. What was that? They shot through the universe in their reality. They reached a level that nobody could understand. They said, Was this from your salah? Was this from your zakah? What was this from? My love. I praised one time and all these doors opened for me and dressed me, blessed me, cleaned me. What my sin? They don't have any sin in the presence of that reality. How Prophet's eyes are dressing them, blessing them. How Prophet hearing, dressing them, blessing them. What type of qudra and power dressing upon these ahbab, these lovers. Then we understand now that dress is upon the shiyukh and the awliya and the, now what do the shaykhs have from that dress? Because Allah says, فِيكُمْ that that light is amongst everyone. So then these awliya, they're dressed from that hearing of Prophet They're dressed with the eyes of Prophet They're dressed with the tongue of Sayyidina Muhammad They carry the hands and the fragrance of Sayyidina Muhammad They carry the qadam and the, and the footsteps of Prophet Means everything they're doing, they're trying their best to do in the way of the ridha and satisfaction. Ilahi anta maqsoodi wa ridat matloob. Ilahi anta maqsoodi wa ridat matloob. Their whole life is we trying our best, it's not an easy thing to accomplish. 
or what they want us to know then these awliya Allah they have the eyes of Sayyidina Muhammad on the earth and they spreading that power. That's why when they describe the Qudra and the power of awliyaullah imagine when they have that type of vision what they see, what their soul is empowering because their eyes have a Wi-Fi and they send out the signal that Prophet wants to be sent out. That's why anything dead in their presence that's why mahya dunub muhi al qulub what in, in the, the qasid that we're reciting they can obliterate your sins and revive your heart because you're without a signal you're like dead filled with sins when their eye comes and hits and scans you immediately it can come back to life in an instant not something difficult their hearing dressing and blessing, their vision dressing and blessing, their speech dressing blessing and then with your, with your qadam you changed my whole destiny. Awatur ni'mati ishqi, with your, with your hand you changed my whole destiny. Huh? As soon as they teach you from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad your entire destiny now just changed. Because this knowledge will dress you and bless you and change everything about your reality. So then they change everything with their eyes, their ears, their tongue, their hands, their feet. Now imagine that light is hitting you, then you have to understand they're actually in you. So how they got that? They went into Prophet When Prophet they surrendered, Salli ala Sayyidina Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslim. Taslima for other people to be nice and good. When they reach their taslima at that stage Allah will order them taslim, submit to the king. Put yourself down, you are nothing. Repeat what the angels understood of ihtiram and you're nothing. وَصَلِّوا عَلَى سَيْدِ مُحَمَّدٍ سَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمُ Taslima was to make you beautiful. But ahbab they're taslim, they're ulul am, they're waiting for the command. As soon as they taslimed and submitted for the order, waiting for the order, Prophet's light has overtaken them, pushed them out of every type of negativity and becomes their hearing, their seeing, their hands, their feet means the light of Prophet is inside of them. When they go out, fikum, like little ships, they go out onto the earth. With what light they're coming to you? Their light begin to enter into you and become your seeing. They see through your eyes, they hear through your ears, they can speak through your tongue, they can move through your hands, they can inspire your qadam and your feet. And you say, well I want to experience it then get yourself out of the way. They're already inside of you but you can't, you're fighting the inspiration that coming to you. Who's fighting is your big nafs. The big nafs is in there saying, no I'm going to hear with my hearing and I'm going to see with my seeing and I'm going to talk definitely from my talking. So this is the big battle inside. When Allah inspire you to be amongst awliya through presence and through video wherever they're reaching means they've reached now inside of you. Malakut, whether you think you're hidden, fiqum, your the light is if it's next to you, you think that you have a hard time entering within you? The door of your body is like so secure they can't, every shaitan can enter inside of you. Allah didn't give them means their light begin to move inside. As soon as they come inside they can hear through you, whatever you're hearing they can hear. Whatever you're seeing they can see. So then that's why the adab of tariqah, keep your vision down because they look through your eyes and they don't like what you're looking at. They can hear through your ears and they don't like what they're hearing. So then they begin to move their energy out. Who's the one who fails and who's the one who succeeds? The one whom Allah described in Qur'an, the one whom purified himself truly has been given a gift. 
Because as soon as he purifies himself, especially in the company of this reality, he, he watches and she watches what, he, what she hears and tries not to hear bad and begin now they can hear through the ear. Because the truth and false they don't play with each other. When the light of truth comes it wants you to have clean hearing, right, and it hears through you. When you control and clean your sight it will begin to see through your eyes and that's the madad. You clean your tongue and what you say and how you say it they'll become the speaking in which you speak. That's how they're doing it. Prophet is hearing through them not because they're dirty people but they took a life in which to clean themselves so that Sayyidina Muhammad would accompany their hearing and say, now I can hear for you, I'll give you from that gift. So then they say, clean your speech so that you can speak on that behalf and that is the whole concept of the madad. The madad is to train in which you're nothing, the train in which you're nothing, get yourself out of the way, get your opinion out of the way, get all your thoughts out of the way and take a path in which to be nothing. And they keep testing you to see if you have an opinion, they don't care for it nor do they want it. Because it's that opinion that got you in trouble and brought you here in the first place. It's all your character that's bad that has to be destroyed. When you have absolutely nothing left, nothing left, nothing left and you died within yourself then all of these faculties can come to life that they will give you the hearing and you hear what nobody can imagine to hear, you see what nobody could imagine to see, you speak realities that nobody can speak from that reality and that becomes the inheritance of that hadith, holy hadith we pray Allah dress us and bless us. These are the blessings of Mawli the Nabi and the, the dressings and gifts from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon, as salaamun al mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri surat al Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.